Special Wednesday, big thing. Normally, we put this one up on Thursday, and Sith Council's today, but Sith Council will be tomorrow. Why? Because we have a lot to talk about. Avatar, the first reactions are out. There's some TV picks, but we have our friend, Kathy Kelly, from the WWE. She is here. We're going to talk to her. The long journey that she's had with the company, and just in general, we've been it's having our buddy back. So we're excited to do that and more on the show today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We just hit 60,000. We hit 60,000 subscribers on the new channel. We want to get to 70 by the end of the year, but that's up to you guys. So make sure you do that. If you haven't, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. The Patreon is moving, everybody. I got the one-on-ones that we're working on. We're doing the, um, the watch-alongs. A lot of great stuff. Brett and Kate, SEN. Tons of stuff over there. So we hope that you join us. Please. Last but certainly not least, the merch store is up. Sith Council, show some class. Big thing, capes and cows. The flirt and flouse himself, the top gun guy. <laughs> the top gun guy? <laughs> the top gun guy? Yeah, the top gun guy. Go and get yourself one of those. And as I said, what a show we have today. It's myself. It's Roxy Stryer. It is Kathy Kelly. And yeah, Brett's here too. Don't worry. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let's get into it. It is the big thing. I'm ready. You ready? Great. Where is the damn show logo? I don't even know where it is. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back, one and all, to the big thing. Christian Harloff here. Roxy Stryer is sitting right next to me in red. And who else is in red today? <laughs> Kathy Kelly. We planned this. We Welcome. did. Welcome. We yeah. didn't, but we did at the same time. It's a, all women text each other before they go anywhere. What color what are, are we wearing? wearing today? That is actually <laughs> one of my least favorite texts to get of really? like, what are you wearing? I'm like, can we just, our time is better spent on something else. Because <laughs> I never know. I don't have yeah, any yeah, idea yeah. until the second before I leave what I'm wearing mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. Now, if people haven't noticed, you see all the great stuff we have on the shelf over in the back over there. Um, <laughs> I like the new edition right near Roxy. There's a head, just a floating head over there. And if you don't know, ladies and gentlemen, there he is. He's all by his lonesome. But he is on. Look at the couch. We find people have been asking to have the couch back since the Schmoes No Days. We have the couch, and that might even be a better setup than last time. And watch this, Brett. How you doing? Uh, Roxy said that uh, we were all wearing blue today, so I'm a little oh. frustrated oh. with that. Yeah, so, so, well, uh, she lied to you. And I feel it. like a complete slob yeah, she with said, this room. She set you up for failure. <laughs> Um, I'm so and, sorry. It was very much on purpose. It was. How great is that that shot over there? It's really good. It's coming, I, a, coming I, along. I am curious though because you guys don't clean for me, but you clean for Kathy. <laughs> like mean. what happened? So let me tell you if that is 100 percent true or false. That is 100 percent true. 100. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, we had we. It, the, it was just like a tons of tons of boxes. But I think, as I said, Kathy mm. was the inspiration to just get it to get it done. The people at home don't know that we were hopping over boxes yeah, and wires boxes to oh, get wow. to the. Yeah, that. But it looked this good before, but now I, I can actually see. Now it's the floor. clean. You can see the I floor. I mean, thank God I wore flats. Yeah, yeah, yeah seriously. <laughs> well, you're okay now. You can, you can, you could, you could do anything you want in here. Now it's amazing. Um, <laughs> anything? But anything you want. It's, 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 don't tempt me. Uh, go ahead. You don't need cheese. It's fine. Um, all right. So I want to. Before we so we have this Avatar stuff, and Brett and I saw it last night. We can't review it yet, obviously, because of the embargo. Um, and we're going to talk TV stuff because Roxy's got a lot of picks. But I want to really, I want to talk to Kathy, man. This is, we haven't talked to Kathy since. Well, I saw you when I was working at Skybound. You came yeah. by. We had lunch, and you were going to do about a year and a half ago. Yeah, and it was, well, no, it was, no, no, no. It was like that was like almost three years ago, Kathy. Really? Yeah, it was. It, it was right before the pandemic. That's wild. I know because. We were talking, and Kathy was going to do some stuff for the showdown. Yeah, and she was going to come in. We, I had her scheduled to do stuff like interviews and stuff that she was going to do for one of our tapings, and then the pandemic hit. Yep. And then it was like she couldn't come in. She couldn't. No, she obviously couldn't. Couldn't. Was like, and then, lo and behold, we get the big news. You go back. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the fact that going back to WWE. When we talked last time, I think it was on Collider Live or Collider, you had left. You were you decided it was the, probably the best decision for you. So let's start there. Why yeah. the first time did you decide to leave uh, WWE? You know, I really wanted room for growth. Uh, and it feels like at the time I had hit a cap there um, of what I was able to do. So... There were other projects that I wanted to work on, like uh, writing a movie, which I ended up doing, um, writing a couple pilots and um, treatments for projects. So 
uh, with WWE schedule, it doesn't always allow you to right. focus on other creative ventures. And those are things that are, I mean, as you guys know, very, very, very time consuming. So uh, got to do those things. Um, and then, yeah, like always stayed in touch with Stephanie and Hunter uh, throughout that. So they knew all of the projects that I was working on. They made it very clear that the door was always open. Um, and then just kind of happened. <laughs> yeah, so let's let, – so massive news, obviously, in that business is when Vince leaves and mm -hmm. he's not running the show anymore. And then they announced that Triple H is going to be is going to be running and taking, taking over. So what – first of all, how do you find that out? And then what is your initial thought when, when you hear that news? I mean, I saw, I think, just like a lot of other people on the internet, <laughs> yeah. that uh, Hunter was going to be running everything. But I think around the same time, he it was right around his birthday, because I remember I just sent him a birthday text. And that's kind of what snowballed everything for, for me coming back. It, it turned from a text into a Zoom call with Stephanie. Um, and conversations just kept on going, so it seemed like the right time, right opportunity. What is that like? Well, like as far as so you just say happy birthday, and everything too, and is it like a hey, listen, are you, what are you doing? Do you want to <laughs> like because I'm curious because he brought back a lot of people. He brought back yeah, yeah. a lot of people, so yeah. I wonder if that was kind of what he was doing. It's like I liked what that person was doing. I couldn't necessarily do that at the time, but now look, she's. I have an opportunity. Let's see what she's doing and bring her back. Is that kind of the gist of it? I mean, definitely. I I also think that. Um, working for them was very appealing. I think that they are both the epitome of what great, great leadership looks like. Mm -hmm. So um, to get to work for them is great. Um, Hunter just cultivates such a fun environment um, where it's really enjoyable to be backstage and get to do your job. So what's your ask when you go back though? Is it like, yes, but I, I want it because you're obviously you're, you're on, you're on raw mm -hmm. and you, is it, is that part of the ask or is that the offer? Um, that was, the offer, yeah. uh, when I talked to Stephanie, she she knew some of the other creative ventures that I was working on. So she kind of, she was like, do you want to come back as a writer? Do you want to come back as a, a liaison to WWE community and do a lot of the, the events, like going to different food kitchens or the boys and girls clubs, yeah. which I loved. Um, and then, I mean, she also offered me training to do commentary, which I love that she believes in me for that. But, um, you know, one of my goals was to always be on either Raw or SmackDown as a backstage interviewer. So when that offer came through, that was something that I was really excited about. That's How amazing. do you not burn that bridge? I feel like a lot of times when people leave a job, yeah. that means that that's done. That's over. How did you make sure that you maintain the relationship? Um, I mean... With those two, I've always had a great relationship. I still have a great relationship with Michael Cole and a lot of other people there. So um, even when I was leaving, they were saying, you know, we want to make this work so you can stay. I just, I think I'd already had my mindset. So Yeah. So, I mean, I think, and so what's the difference um, between when you were there now to what it's like? Because anytime the leadership changes, there's always a different way certain people run things as opposed to how it was run previously. What's the difference now when, when you go there, whether it's locker room stuff, whether it's just the atmosphere in general, how, how would you th think uh, the difference is? I mean, for me, there's not much of a difference because I was at NXT, which was run by right, Hunter at the right, time. Right. So it was always, you know, just a lot of people who are creative and passionate about what they do. And I think that it's that on a bigger platform. What about those other projects that you had been working on? Now do you back burner them again? Or did you kind of it, scratch that itch already and feel like, okay, now that's why I can come back? Um, I mean, writing a movie is such a feat. So to finish it, I think was such an accomplishment for me. Um, and now I'm hoping to get that developed because, you know, why write it unless yeah. it comes to fruition? So uh, really hoping that that is something that comes to life. And then I honestly, as I was writing it, I was like, this is so tough. I don't know if I could do another one. And the other day I had another idea. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, like, that's something that I definitely want to work on. But, well, I don't know how much time I can dedicate to that right now. When you uh, Just going back to when they offered you the gig and you wanted to go, like, what was it, though, where you said, did you, did you have to think about it? Like, did you say, hey, um, definitely interested but how yeah. long how long did you decide was it like immediate like yeah i'm gonna come back i want to do this again or was it let me think about it and i'll get back to you i mean they had mentioned things in the past of me going back and i think that i was finally ready to do it so it was just the right time um and definitely jumped at the opportunity 
Um, Michael Cole was joking. He's like, why am I the last one to know? <laughs> but uh, he, he, he gave the, the offer and I was like, I'm in. So um, yeah, it just, it worked That's out. Great. Yeah. And what about the nerves though? Because like, I know the first time I even, God, it seems like a hundred years ago when I was there, but like even the, the nerves of showing up, you're in that click already now because yeah. you'd already had to, but the first time when you get into it, it's like, oh, it's just such a tight knit thing there. But is it, do, do the nerves come fire, firing back in a different way once you like your, what's the first day like when you go back? I mean, it was very different from the nerves with the first time I started. I feel like it was more excitement this yeah. go around. Last time I was so nervous just because, you know, I was a, a fan of WWE before. So going in and, and covering it for years at After Buzz, um, you know, I, I went in and Michael Cole even said, he's like, do not be a fan. So I took that as like, okay, I'm going to stay to myself. I'm not going to, you know, ruffle anyone's feathers. I'm going to, you know, just do my job. And, um, I don't know that that was the best route to take, I guess, but now it's just, I mean, it feels like home. So going back is it's more excitement than nerves. What route do you think somebody should take in that position? Do you think being a fan is actually an asset? I mean, I think knowing, the product, knowing WWE is definitely an asset. Um, I think the people that have always wanted to work for WWE in some capacity end up being the most passionate and bringing the most to the table. Um, but then you also have people who, you know, were going to take other avenues and wound up in WWE and now they're, you know, killing it. So yeah. it just kind of, it depends, you know. The product has also gotten significantly better under um triple h and I, I mean like for people who know watch my who watch my show and keeping up with me and even when we talked about it on collider live like i was a massive fan for such a long time and then working there coming back and i was not for like a very long we talked about this i was for like however long it was i was i was off the table watching wrestling for a bit and then i got back into it when i started the schmodown and wanted to see what was going on i got the wwe network all that and then even the last couple of years though i was i said i don't know i just it's not I, I would watch all the pay per views with my daughter, and I think I had texted you when they had the the all um, the female uh, Royal Rumble, and my daughter was just <laughs> wide eyed watching, and she loves loves Sasha Banks, just loves her. So, um, but anyway, there were certain times I'm like, I don't know, it just does. It seems it seems a little predictable. It seems a little lazy at times. And then once they announced that Triple H has taken over. You could see the difference, you, and people have been saying it inside of the the reviews for it, and in what way. The creative is different, and the, the story seems to matter more. And the 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 focus on certain characters and the stuff that they're doing with Sami Zayn and the things that they're doing, obviously Roman Reigns, yeah. and and how massive like the, it just seems like it comes from an old school point of view, but that's in a good way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes old school can 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 hurt you, but in yeah. an old school like kind of thinking, like what do, you, why do you think? Also, I don't know if you if you agree or disagree with that, but like why do you think that Triple H is built for this job well that's a, a very big question yeah. i think you know the last couple of years while i was gone a lot of television really struggled to find their footing during covid because you had such you know limited areas to work with and you know we saw this across the board with like saturday night live filming sketches in their you know tom hanks's living room or right, whatever right, it was right. so um you know i still think they they killed it in a lot of ways of putting on WrestleMania in a performance center. Like there are just so many things that they did um, creatively that I, I really found cool. Um, and then as far as Triple H, he just really allows people to be the most creative versions of themselves. And I think that that's what great leadership looks like is, you know, listening to to people's ideas and allowing them to be themselves, giving them that creative freedom um, so I think that's a lot of what you're seeing now. Yeah, it seems like it. Go ahead, You've Ross. always been a, a fan first, which I think you and I have bonded on because we're both really nerdy, uh, <laughs> which is awesome. But as a fan, what is it, what's one thing you would love to see them do, the WWE in general? You know, one of my favorite events that they put on was the Women's Evolution. Um, it was an all-women's pay-per-view, uh, and I would love to see them bring that back. Uh, we only got one. Uh, I was hoping that it would be something that happened every year because I think it was just such a, a cool event. What year was that? Uh, Recently? 2018 or something? Yeah, around yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. So like Do we know why they didn't bring it back? Just because 
pandemic related probably uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know I'm not sure but um either way so and in going into the the backstage stuff and now that, the, that you're able to do the interviews and who's what has been the most fun thing for you doing that? Who, who's your most fun person to interview, though? Who, who do you get? I'm sure you get that question a lot. <laughs> um, God, that's a tough question. Uh, who do you have the most? Uh, let's say, who do you have? Uh, who, who makes you laugh when, when you have to try to keep it into? You, you got to try to keep, you know, the face, obviously. You got to keep, yeah, yeah. keep it. Who, keep the face. You got to keep, keep the face. face. You got to keep the face. Uh, how do you how do you do it, though? Like, how, uh, who or who is it in general that you're like, OK, here we go. This is going to be I'm in awe of this person. Yeah. Uh, New Day is always so yeah, fun I'm to sure. interview. Yeah, they yeah, are yeah. just absolutely wild. Some of the stuff that they come up with, I have no idea how they do it. Um, so yeah, they're always so fun. Um, and then Otis, yeah, is hilarious, and you know, just one of those people with great comedic timing. So, uh, for him to be a man of very few words, he can still make you can crack up. Yeah. How do you get along with Paul Heyman? I love Paul. Paul's the coolest. Man. I love Paul yeah. so much. Um, I think that he is such an incredible manager. I think he's great in in that role. I think he's great in a mentorship role for a lot of the the, the superstars. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that there are also a lot of up and coming managers who are really incredible. Uh, Zelina Vega, mm -hmm. who's been a friend of mine for years. Uh, I was telling her the other day of you know some of the, the things that. She says, I don't know where she pulls him from, but she's she's really good no, at talking. Yeah. <laughs> remember when we talked about Paul Heyman on, uh, on yeah. Claire Live, mm -hmm. and then right afterwards, Paul, and I, because Paul was pretty much the guy that was very welcoming to me when I was there. Yeah. And he was the guy that was, when I was, I, my the day that I got the gig, he's like, hey, I got to, he was only asking me the question. He said, if you don't get this job, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'd probably walk out the door, write another letter in a couple of weeks and try to do it again. And, he's, and, I, and he comes and he goes, you know, that's what got you the job. And then he said, but I got a feeling about you. Come here. And he sat me down. He put the headphones on. He goes, I want you to call a match. And I ate shit. <laughs> like uh, the biggest pile of it. But that's he, what I'm saying. Commentary is very difficult. The people that make it look good, like Michael Cole is on another level. The fact that he can do that week in and week yeah. out seamlessly is unreal. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I wish that I... I could go back in time and do it now after all my experience with like the Schmodown and mm -hmm. stuff and do it. But it's like, I'm, I was 22 years old. Yeah. So what do you mean when you say you ate shit? Like what actually <laughs> happened? No, I was like, he, I, whatever the, whatever it was, I just remember being like, I wasn't ready for it. Like, you know, I was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I called the match, but I didn't do it in a way that I should have. In the done. moment you knew that you were like, Oh wow, that was I awful. Was, I was like, that didn't work. He, he, he could <laughs> see, and he was being nice, but you could see he's like, all right, but, but he, but it was the fact that, like, I wound up doing that at live events and doing that. But the fact that Paul was, he, I'd known him, I'd known him for, like, a couple hours. Yeah. And he's like, I, I feel like you could do this. And that moment I didn't. But <laughs> but I did it. But I did it for the last nine years. He you saw know? it in you. Yeah, he did. And yeah. he's, but he's just, and he's, and I've always, and I've still kept up with him on DMs and stuff. And I've asked him to do something. He's like, he's like, why don't we do something that's really big? And, and he's, but he's just very kind. And he's always like asking uh, questions and he'll do stuff. But I, and he said something the other day that I thought was awesome. To you? Know? you? No, not to me, but just, I saw a quote, a quote from him and they basically said about it. He's like, look, it, I want the best person to have the job. It's not about me. If someone comes in that should be with Roman Reigns, and should be, you know, and is better than me, then that person should have the job. And it's just like the, the, it's like, it's the best. He says that knowing that he's the best he does person. hundred percent. Of course. I've, but he, but even, but even kind of led into that, led, led going like, I believe that right now I am the best person doing mm -hmm. this for the thing. But if someone comes along with they are the best, they should have the job yeah. because he's about, and he always has been elevating the product. Always has been. So it's it's I'm so happy that he's still there and doing it. There's a reason why he's still there. Well just wait for Kathy dangerously. <laughs> okay. Um I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. Um oh, what's it? Go what ahead. happens when you achieve your goal? Like I know that you had said last time you had always wanted to get on raw. Now yeah. you're there. So then do you set new goals or do you just think like Thank God for this goal. Okay, I just need to focus on this right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're the same of, I have so many creative goals. Like there are so many things I want to accomplish within WWE and there are so many things that I want to accomplish outside of WWE creatively. So um, it's just, I mean, one of the things I love is that I get to work with my friends. And yeah. so um, coming up with other creative ventures with them, I think is, you know, always something that I want to yep. continue doing. 
How's those goals that you're saying <laughs> at WWE? Yeah. What yeah. is what is one of them? Um, so I really want to do more stuff on um, PLEs and on uh, WrestleMania. Have a little mm. backstage interview WrestleMania moment would be great. Um, Let's but- go, Kat. <laughs> yeah, seriously, and, and it's and it's here. It's here this year. Yeah, or and then, next year. Uh, last time I was at WWE, I created several shows. So I created uh, Talking Snack and um, The Bump, which I worked on for years. Uh, to have that come to fruition and so to create more shows with them I think would be really fun yeah um and you know it's only a, like a month and a half in so yeah. I'm just settling into the role yeah, that yeah. I'm in now um getting acclimated and used to the the schedule again I think is is the main focus right now but yeah. those are definitely things that I want to look forward to yeah there so, let's go there because you yeah. said that as we're walking in you were talking about how tough it is the schedule tell yeah. let, let the audience know what your schedule is like on a weekly basis. Um, I mean, and uh, your social security number. Yes. And, exactly and your address. Where you exactly, yeah. <laughs> but I just want to know the schedule wise, because it's, it's, it's like working for a circus. Yeah. I mean, every single person in the company has a, a crazy schedule. So I'm definitely not one to complain, but um, I am currently uh, traveling for both raw and SmackDown. So that means being home typically, midday Tuesday to midday Thursday. Mm. Um, occasionally I'll try to take a red eye out on Thursday so I get a second full day at home um, to do laundry and <laughs> sort my life. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, um, it's just on the road. How do you get a chance? Because I know you like um, you, you, the baking. You're doing the ba- with baking. How do you get a chance to do it? There's not no been much chance, baking huh? since yeah. I've been home. Yeah. Happy mm. cupcake. I know. I know. Maybe maybe in the week off that I have for Christmas, I'll, I'll get some baking in. But yeah. other than that, um, yeah, like not really doing much other than working, working. out, um, taking meetings. and. You're active as hell on social, though. Uh, you really, Am I? Yeah. It's usually the days that I'm like at work and I have stuff to post. <laughs> but you're smart. I think you guys, you guys are both really good at it. I'm still trying to figure. I'm getting better, rocks with yeah. the shorts. Okay. You, um, you don't think so? I well, finally, the, with the text on them, you are you are getting there for <laughs> sure. Um, I would say if we were at a C, we're at a B minus. You know. Okay. Like thank working. you. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. The post. I think I I would give myself a B. I would say B minus. I'd say listen. There's I, room for growth. <laughs> Well, you don't like the shorts? No, I those I do like. Well, what the hell? What are you talking about? The posting? No, yeah, I just think we still need some work. Like you do a lot of great things. Okay. And then sometimes you'll like I post, post a picture there. of shoes and beef. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, that's an upcoming project that we're working yeah. on here on the channel. No, I don't mean that. I just mean literally <laughs> shoes and shoes beef. and beef. Yeah. But I, I listen recently. If you haven't been checking my Instagram, if that's the case, because I post three videos a day now. Yeah. No, that's I haven't. Right. You've got the text on them too, that's and right. they look professional. You've been no, doing better. That's yeah. a B minus. Yes. Tough critic. Tough <laughs> We're critic. getting there. We're right. getting there. You're um, no Gen Z, you know? No, I'm not. I really I, am I'm, not. I'm probably at a B. So, you know, I, okay. I'm putting you just well, a Kathy's little. Kathy's at an A. Yes, she am I? Yeah. 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 She's oh, solid. Wow. Yeah. She's solid. See, yeah. I was thinking, like, I, my life is so boring outside of work. No, you do a great job of showing what you're up to. Okay. Yeah, you do. And that's what people care yeah. about. Yeah. Like, what did you do today? Well, I mean, you know, Wednesday, it's usually just petting my dog and doing laundry. That's so. what you did that day. <laughs> True. Well, for the both of you guys, another thing is you're both stylish. You both get the style. Oh, and for me, the red thing. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't have it except right now because I got Vincero watches. And I'll tell mm. you that. Vincero. I didn't know a lot about Vincero, but I was told about it. And then they sent me this. I said, oh, my God. This is a great watch. There's no better way to spread holiday cheer than if you upgrade your style. So people are already complimenting me, walking around Universal. Said, nice watch. I said, thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Our friends over at Vincero are sponsoring today's episode. So once again, if you're not familiar with Vincero yet, they make exceptionally crafted and stylish watches at affordable prices. It's so true. If you browse around that website, you'll take a look. And what a gift. What a gift. What a gift it was to me. If you're looking for the perfect holiday gift, you want to elevate your style or someone you love, you can save 20% off and free shipping site-wide with their our exclusive code. you got to use Big Thing. Support our show and check them out at Vincero, V-I-N-C-E-R-O. And that is VinceroCollective.com. Use that code big thing. I'm telling you, this is such a smooth watch. I love this watch. It's and it feels good. And I think that was the one thing. What what I love about watches is when you can't even really you don't even realize that they're on your wrist. They just kind of blend into your entire your entire being. Walking around, I'm telling you. It's like, oh yeah, look at this thing. This looks smooth, man. 
And they got good sunglasses too. They're just, and they have luggage, everything. And if you're worried that someone's not going to like the gift, whether you need to return or swap it, there's no problem. Ventura has a five year guarantee and a 365 day free return policy, and they have you covered. So, whether it's a gift for yourself or someone else in your life, add Vincero to the top of your wish list. Don't wait. I'm telling you, it's going to be too late. You get 20% off and free shipping site wide. Use that code big thing at www. There you go. I'm going to double www. Uh, VinceroCollective.com. Support the show and check out them at V I N C E R O Collective.com. Use that code big thing. Look good, feel good, and save big this holiday with Vincero. We love them. I love them, man. I'm telling you that right now. I'm a big fan. There it is. I got it. And the sunglasses are pretty awesome, too. Um, all right, let's get into some other stuff. Now, you, do you have a chance to watch anything on the road, like movies and TV? I'm watching, like, 12 hours of wrestling a week. So yeah. <laughs> there's there's been very little time to actually uh, consume any other television. Yeah. Um, I finished The Bear, which I love. People love that show. Yeah, she's so me, she's, Roxy's been telling me to watch it forever. Oh, it's so good. And you've been listening. I, I have been listening to some of your stuff. Which? I'm Severance. Wa- I'm watching Severance right now. I just finished episode five. It's How been about that? six months of me telling you to watch Severance, and finally <laughs> I got you to watch one show. Did I do it? Everybody, no, two. The you guys at home love you. You're listening to me. Yeah. You're watching what I'm asking for. I'm just like so grateful to you guys. Christian, yeah. I could tell him that if he watched this show, it would save like it would save people from dying. I'm, like, I'm, I'm not listening <laughs> no, it's to not you. True, it depends on the show. Um, but the, the 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 patient I watched too. The whole thing? No, some of it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm in between like <laughs> Emmy nominated type shows yeah. and Love Island. Like that's it's either one or the other. Well, Roxy's so. gonna do. She's gonna recommend some shows for us in a little bit. Okay. But in the meantime, we're gonna talk about some of this other stuff. Um, Avatar. Man, oh man, you saw it in the um, description. Now, Roxy has not seen it yet. Kathy hasn't chance to see it. Brett and I have seen it. Brett can't talk right now because he messed up all the cameras at this point. So um, <laughs> yes. we yes, that's Brett's fault. Brett. <laughs> sure. But we we the all the um, first reactions came out last night, and there and I posted my reaction. Brett and Kate posted their reaction, and it's it's big, man. It's a big movie. People I want to read what you said, so because you can't, but I can, right? You, yeah, you tweeted read, it. Yeah, you t- I tweeted it also, and I also uh, did my my actual reaction that you can see if once Roxy uh, reads my reaction out. But it's very similar to what, to what I posted. But so um, it's embargoed still. It's the review is embargoed. Got embargoed, it. yes. But you can give the, um, the the quick reactions. But either way, um, of course, I'm having internet problems today, but that's fine. the The overall consensus is that it's a really great movie. Mm. This is what Christian had to yes. say about it. Just saw Avatar The Way of Water. I was a big fan of the first one, and I'm a big fan of this one. Yay. Emotional and absolutely stunning. It's such a cinematic experience. I don't know if it'll win over a lot of people who didn't like the first one, but I was happy to be back in Pandora. Okay. So I was wrong about that, by the way. By some people who didn't like the first one uh, are lo- loving this a one? A lot of people that didn't like Blink the first Blink twice one. if it's better than the first one. Um... <laughs> I think it's better than the first one. Is yeah, it, does it look, or I guess you can't answer a lot of these questions, but what that, are yeah. people saying about the way that it looks versus the way the first one looks? Well, that's first reaction. I mean, look, the, the technology, you're, you're looking at 2009 mm-hmm. as compared to now. And 2009 was groundbreaking, yes. it did, but now in 2022, leading into 23, it's incredible. And now one of the things that I would say that I was concerned about that I still think could be a thing for some people is I did see it in 3D, and people are asking me that on reaction because I didn't talk about it. I believe that it should be watched in 3D. Not everybody can handle 3D, but I think it was great. The frame rate was what I was worried about. Like there's a, the frame rate that they shot, like the Hobbit four and everything too. Like this is shot at such a high frame rate that it make people sick. No, it wouldn't make you sick, but it's it's just it's just very different from what you're normally used to looking for film. You know when you have the television setting on and it looks like you're almost like it, it looks so real at yeah. some point, it looks almost like a video camera. I stuff. don't know. People don't stop talking about frame rate and the way like if I'm watching something with Darina, you don't, you don't notice I don't it. notice it. Well, I don't you're not see have a problem. it. But I feel so dumb in these conversations because I watch as more things than anybody. If watches. you saw two things side by side, I'm sure you would, you would see the difference. Right. But I'm the same way where I I mean I consume a lot of media from my phone or laptop because yeah. I'm traveling all the time and I, I can't, you know, bring an HGTV. <laughs> right, right, right. It just doesn't bother me. It just doesn't. This didn't bother me either, and I thought it would. I thought because I, we saw at D23, they showed us a lot of the footage, yeah. and I was like, it just looks incredible. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the 3D is pop. It's, it's 
meant for 3D. There's some 3D that's just like, okay, this is just a gimmick. You feel like you're there. Like you feel like you're there. But there were just times that I was like, okay, you can notice the frame rate. It's three hours and ten minutes. And deserved the, it or not? I think so. I think if you wanted to, you could always say, Yeah, you could shave five, ten minutes off. Okay, fine. But I didn't I didn't want it to end. Yeah. Like I didn't want it to end. Does it have an interesting story? Yes. Emotional well, story. More, I feel like it has to. Yeah, it's got an emotional story. Yeah. I, somebody asked me to recap what the, f- the story of the first one was the other day. I, I have no idea. When was the last time you saw it? Blue in 2009. Falling right. in love. That's what I said. I said, <laughs> I said, I said they were blue and something about their tails connecting. I, yeah, yeah. I would yeah. recommend. I would recommend if you had a chance to watch it again before I, you see. Oh, it. I would watch the first one again. The first Avatar I saw in Puerto Rico, and so it. Had it was <laughs> like they dubbed it over, oh, okay. Um, and it was English subtitles. Mm. <laughs> so, what were you doing on vacation? I was you? on vacation in Puerto Rico, yeah. and so I was like, Oh, I'm gonna go see Avatar. Doesn't that show you though how big with. that movie was? Yeah. You were on vacation in Puerto Rico and you went and still saw it. That that says a lot. That, that and that's what this movie I mean. I think it was anyone's... raining that day, yeah, but still, <laughs> yeah, but, but, but still, the fact that you were gonna go and then to see a movie out and 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 this movie. It, it, Broke a lot of records it was, that it was the, time around. It was yeah. the number one movie. I think it, it still is now. I've I had some it took, it bad took over luck Endgame. with um, James Cameron films when I see them in theaters. Of the first Why? time I saw Titanic in theaters, the uh, you know that that scene where Jack is handcuffed and and there's water rising. Yeah, yeah. Um, the fire alarm in the movie theater went off and everyone oh, had no. to evacuate, but we also weren't sure whether that was part of the movie experience oh, right. or whether it was. Oh my God. Yeah, so we were all just kind of like sitting there for a few minutes until the fire marshal came in. To like, get out, you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was there an actual fire? I honestly, I was what? Yeah, yeah. 10, I don't know. Yeah. That was in 97? E- movie Shack. trivia showdown champion yeah. of the world. That was ninety seven. Yeah, yeah. I, I only know because anything that came out the same year as Goodwill Hunting, I know. So yeah. I was eight. <laughs> yeah. We <God>. won. <laughs> Sons of bitches. <laughs> um, yeah. But yes. But, but it's gone. But I was looking at some other reactions because, as I said, I wanted to make it clear to anybody who was either watching it or when I tweeted it out was that just know that you're talking to someone who really enjoyed the first one because there were a lot of people I think that once the movie came out on like whether it's Blu-ray or DVD or, or watched it on streaming or whatever, it doesn't play the same way in the theater because yeah. it's such a theatrical experience, the first one. And it, and I hurt some people's enjoyment of the first one, I believe. But after I saw, that's why I wanted to say, listen, I do watch the first one. I watched it with my now 11-year-old uh, a couple of months ago, and she loved it. So you were coming, my point of view was- She's 11? She just turned 11, yeah. Oh, my God. I know. We went to Universal Studios the other day for her birthday. But we'll get back to that. <laughs> um, but just enjoying the overall experience. I said, listen, this is me as someone who's a fan. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said, I don't know if people who didn't like the first one, because there were a lot of similar beats. But then I started seeing people who didn't like the first one love this. And even even Bibbs, who hates all the stuff that everybody else loves. You liked it? He, he, this, okay. is what, <laughs> this is what Bibbs said. Bibbs said something along the lines of, I was not a big fan of the first Avatar and reasons why this, but this is a significant improvement. So to the, that's, that's Bibbs loving it, you know? He doesn't love the movie, obviously, but that's that that is a to me that's a win for the movie. Will this make as much money as the first one? More. Now that's a tough. Oh, I don't know. You think? Here's the here's the problem. That movie, the first one, because it, it you know it's had uh, whatever it is twelve years to marinate. It, it came out in two thousand nine, so it yeah. had twelve years to to marinate, and it's now. I think that's thirteen, right? Do you have to see 13, the first 13, one? Right, to see, nine, right. Do you have to watch the first one to understand the second one? I think that it. I think it's beneficial, okay. and it's and it's clearly leading up for more movies as he's talked about, and that's yeah. what I think he's done brilliantly. Because something about Sigourney Weaver, right? I, that okay. I can't get into, but right. but I can just tell you that this what he's done brilliantly for. I think for I talked to someone who wasn't a necessarily a fan of the first one, loved this one, and now can't wait for a new one. Hmm. That's what James Cameron has done. He has yeah. set up people caring about this world because a lot of people like are people still going to care you're going to care you're absolutely going to care what about the money is this going to sorry so um so the first so sorry sorry. so the first (laughs) one made the first one is still because they did a re-release and i said it had like all these years to marinate and re-releases and things and it just surpassed endgame again as the number one movie of all time so i think it's something like two point can you look that up right and see is it it, it, avatar and box office mojo i think it's like 2.1 billion so this movie, the big story last week was that this movie cost probably cl- I, it, it's like four hundred million dollars, which is which is insane, or maybe even more than that. I think That's it, with marketing or that. 
um, without. I think it total. I think it needs to make eight hundred million to break even. That's how much it needs to make to break even. It will. I agree. For I, sure, that I agree. Especially after seeing it, I agree. Now, I thought it was going to finish up at like one point two, because. But the only reason I think it, because people were like, "Is it going? Are you going to want to do re- repeat viewings of this movie?" Because that's where you get your business. And after seeing it, yes, I believe so. <laughs> so I, do you think it's going to break two or no? No. Well, okay. it's it's also such a different landscape as far as in 2009. Yes. You didn't have as many popular streaming services. You didn't have as much competition. Yep. Everything was in theaters for a prolonged amount of time. And now they're, you know, the, the showings are only a month or two. That's usually... Absolutely correct. However, the only reason why this might be different is because there's no competition for this movie until like February okay. where Ant-Man comes out because yeah. there's nothing. Like even I was talking about with Brett, for even for, for people who do this for, you know, covering whether it's movies or TV, it's been dead over the last, like, Black Panther Wakanda Forever was like the big one. Andor was pretty big, but it's been dead. Is it also going to be a movie though that people go back and watch three times? I think it is. Okay. At I think three hours, is. 10 minutes? I want to go see it tomorrow. Yo, some people have some free chunks of time. I don't, I don't, ha- I don't have the time to do it. But you but, want to. But I want to. And if you did, you would. I'm going to take my daughter to see it. And then I, I had another- One sp- daughter? I, the five year old can't handle it. Is that true? Yeah, no. She the three D is one is one part of it. Plus, she's too. She's. I too don't get kids. You know that. Yeah, no. She's five. She's she's there's and it's it's violent at, at times. So yeah. and it's emotional for sure. What's I, it rated? If it, I think it's a hard PG thirteen. Really? Yeah. The, was the first Avatar PG thirteen? Yeah, yeah. It had to have been to make that kind of money. You couldn't make two billion dollars on rated R. No, I thought it was PG. <laughs> no. I don't remember the movie. No, no, Wasn't no. Wasn't Titanic PG thirteen? Yeah. 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 But what happens that it's PG-13? I thought in, it was in like... In what, vi- Titanic? No. Oh, no, it's it's hard. Violence. Really? Yeah. You see, I don't remember that. Well, even when Steve, well, Steve and Lane... the sexy time with the blue yeah. people. Did that happen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a sexy time, but it's... Like, full sexy time? In the first one, yeah. And in the first Avatar, there's full blue people sexy time. There's blue penis. <laughs> no. no there's blue kidding. tail. Yeah. Blue okay. tail. Okay. Yeah. But you're like, no. There's no blue penis. Wait, is it right PG-13? Yeah. Oh, it's PG-13. What's the box office for the first one? Oh, the first one's Brett, the new one Brett, didn't even come out you, yet. How, how would, would you, we know? <laughs> yeah. How would we know the box office for the new one doesn't come out That's for another week? For but he went. This guy saw the movie. <laughs> yeah. So this is why I'm the look things up girl. Normally you are. Yeah. But, no, Brett, you don't have a microphone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go look it up, Roxy? <laughs> look, I genuinely don't know what he said. And, and no one knows what he said. <laughs> Brett, um, I'm cheering well, for you while, so hard. All right, listen. While Brett, while while Brett is uh, is doing that, let me tell you guys, it's time to to make sure that you get yourselves. You got to go and get yourself some good Christmas gifts this year. Have you guys been uh, paying attention to Uncommon Goods? I saw some people that were shopping on there and said, "Hey, I I, I spent. You were right. I spent a lot of time." On, on Common Goods, and I, I wind up buying a lot of Christmas gifts. You should, because every, I'm, I'm terrible at gifts. I'm so bad. I'm really bad at gifts, because I always get like this, uh, gift cards. I'm not good at it. And I get the boring, basic, kind of bland gifts. I'm not doing that anymore, because Uncommon Goods is my secret weapon. It can be yours. It, it's here to make your holiday shopping stress-free, and you scour the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for your secret Santa, your entire family, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. There's so much good stuff, whether it's the kitchen stuff. I keep telling everybody about this cheese board that I got. Love it. It's great. And there's other stuff you can get, necklaces and jewelry, and obviously jewelry and a lot, a lot of different things. You, you can see just, just alone on that, they have like cool retro gifts and clothing. It's, it's awesome. And when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. They look for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. Every purchase that you make at Uncommon Goods, by the way, they give back a dollar to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They donated donated more than two and a half million dollars so far. It's a lot. It's great. And you want to get fifteen percent off your next gift? You have to go to uncommongoods.com/slash/big-thing. Uncommongoods.com/slash/big-thing. Get fifteen percent off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. It's Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. And thanks again to our sponsor over at Uncommon Goods. Go to the link in the description. Please go and check them out. They're amazing. A lot of people have been doing it. So I'm happy to hear it. I'm very happy to hear it. Um, all right. So are you going to try to see Avatar 
in the theater when it comes yeah. out? When it comes out? Yeah. If you get a I, chance? It might be uh, streaming it later. Yeah. When's your break? Um, Over over Christmas. You have a Christmas yeah. break. Okay. Yeah. A couple things to tell you guys. Yes, go ahead. Variety did an article that said Avatar 2 needs $2 billion to turn a profit. It's, un- it's untrue. That's that it's not true. An absolutely wild no, sentiment. That's not true. Uh, but the first movie, which uh, this is even crazier than you said, got two point nine two billion dollars in box no. office, okay. so close to three. Close to three. Um, no, it's not. It, so I think that they mis- that that article miscalculated from because they were talking about they were it's based off an interview that James Cameron gave about how much yeah. it. Uh, it costs, but I think James Cameron was talking about overall inside of domestic. He wasn't talking about worldwide. So. What is the highest grossing movie yeah. of all time? I think time? it's Avatar. It Avatar. Still? So Avatar was the number one, and then Avengers Endgame took it over. I it was and Frozen, then, wasn't it? No. <sighs> and then they re-released, and then they re-released um, Avatar, and it surpassed Endgame by a little bit. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so Avatar uh, with 2.922. Yeah. Avengers and Game 2.797. Yeah. And then any guesses for what's third? Is it f- We've talked about it on today's show. We talked about it on today's show. Titanic. Yeah. yeah. It's Titanic at wow. 2.2. That's why James Cameron is just, he's just a legend. Then I'm going to get him to direct the movie I wrote, you know? You should. 100%. <laughs> it will well, only he's gonna take be doing, him 20 years. <laughs> he's going <gonna, laughs> to be doing Avatar until he's an Avatar. Yeah. Uh, he's going to, he's, he's, the, that, if he says he wants to do like Avatar 5, 6, and 7, and I'll tell you, Originally, I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know if anybody's going to want to go back. We'll see. He, I want to see so many of these movies now. Mm-hmm. I want to see so many of them. It was, it was such a great job. You know what the number, you're going to not know the answer to this, number yeah. 11 on the list is? 11? No. What's Top Gun one? Maverick. Yeah, it was yeah. close to 1. Point, was it 1.3? 1.487. Yeah. That's incredible. That's Let's great. go, Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> so anyway, so the reactions clearly are, are, have been pretty good for um for this. Do you, are you still mic'd or you're not even mic'd anymore? Good for you. Um, it's a, you're all right. You're fine. I'm glad you're here, though. <laughs> it's just his energy that we love to have around. It's just the energy. At first, I told him to wear blue. Then yeah. I put him on the couch. Then you put him on the couch. Then, he, then you stole his camera. <laughs> then I took his camera, and then I said, take off your mic. Let's see how it goes. It's so he blends into the, the wall, and then yeah. it's, it, it's almost like he's not even here. The thing the is, um, I was threatened by his yes. very oh. overpowering... Yeah. Um, Presence. Presence. Yes. Yeah, his gift. His present is a present. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, red is a dominating color. So yeah. It's mm-hmm. Is that true? To assert your dominance. Look yeah. That. So now I know why you guys both wear it. I'm, <laughs> feeling, I'm scared. Uh, all right. Uh, other than that, I think those are the, that's that's the big thing. You wore Knowing, red? You got my memo? Ish. Um, but I will say this. I'm glad that all these reactions have been coming out, and for people even who didn't like the first movie, seem to be enjoying it. So that's the first reactions of Avatar. Very positive buzz. I wonder now if that's going to transfer into into award stuff. I don't know. We'll see. I wonder if they'll ever if they'll they'll. I think Zoe Saldana should be up for for uh, at least a, a potential nomination for for best Animation supporting actress or best supporting actress yeah. i think she was so good but yeah i think i think it's visually Shoe in for animation and it, everything it, else. visually for sure yeah. visual effects it, it a sound it's gotta be it's gotta be it would be ridiculous yeah, if it wasn't is it gonna be up for best picture i hope so i hope so do you think it will um i mean right now a couple of days ago i would have told you probably not i don't think you know even not seeing it i don't know if people would but the critical response Besides just people who love the first movie seem to really, really like it. So maybe, maybe. I mean, there's a reason why they put it out. I saw it at a critics uh, a, for the Critics' Choice Awards. Or the, I, that's the screen that I went to. And there, that was offered because of that. I was supposed to go to the one that everybody goes to. And then I got that. I was like, oh, wow. So I guess they're pushing it for awards. So anyway, uh, very curious what you guys think. What are, you, are you excited for Avatar? Have you been paying attention to the reactions? Do you want to see the movie? Let me know. I got to know. All right, now it's time for Rox. Roxy, you got some TV stuff you're going to tell us about? We're going to tell us whether we've heard of it, want to see it, not want to see it. What do you got? How many of these things is Christian actually going to watch? Okay, I'm stoked on this one. So Better Things is a show that people have been recommending that I watch for years. It came out in 2016, but its final season was this year. And I'm trying to hit 130 shows I've watched this year. I'm at 115 so far. So I'm only really focusing on shows that came out this season uh, in 2022. So this counts. Better Things is on FX. It's Pamela Adlon. It is 
so funny. She's funny. She is so funny yeah. in this. I, I think that sometimes FX shows get a little buried, especially because mm-hmm. this happened during the FX goes to Hulu time period, mm-hmm. and so it was in two There's different places. Definitely. And this show is really worth your time. I'm running through it incredibly fast. Uh, the kids on this show, I think, would crack you up, Christian. It's giving me a better understanding of what it's like to be a parent and mm-hmm. The living hell hole that seems to be having <laughs> children all yeah. the time. Uh, and it doesn't shy away from the fact that it's like infuriating when your kid, some people's kids are not nice. <laughs> like they're just right. not nice. And uh, two of her kids are lovely, and one of them is a stinker. <laughs> and it's like amazing to watch her have to deal with that. It's all right, really, so really better good. things. And that's on um, FX. That's on FX. But you can watch it on Hulu. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That one is one that I might actually be able to get. Uh, my wife to watch because we like her. She reminds us of our friend um, Cricket. Who I don't know if you ever met Cricket before, but uh, oh, that's the name of the guy on It's Always Sunny. Who? Oh, well, no. Do you watch that's that show? That's the name of my friend's know. mom. Is Cricket? it Cricket? <laughs> yeah, well, Cricket's. She's awesome, but maybe she's it's a, the same person. Uh, yeah, maybe, uh, no, she didn't have any kids, but she, but she reminds <laughs> us of her. And then I remember. Well, it makes sense that Lucy K was also the writer, one of the writers, because they were. She played his wife. Yeah, so I didn't say that part because I thought it might make people not watch it. But he, he was one of the EPs of the show. Let's also um, not forget. Look, here's the other thing with Lucy K. It's a yes, horrible stuff. Got in trouble for it too. You can't take away that he's a very funny dude. His very his show was hilarious. Louis was very. He's from my hometown. Yeah. Um. I I can I um, don't speak on him often, but if we're just talking about somebody's talent level, he's so. Yeah, and that's probably what, another talented. reason why you're enjoying the, show, in the show. And he's so. not in the show, so you don't have to stare at his face. Right. So that helps. <laughs> well, either way. So this that is now that's on. Um, FX Hulu. FX Hulu. So the next one. I've told you guys about Abbott yeah. Elementary before, but I want to tell you guys again because we are in the sophomore year of this show and it is officially, we are in December. This is the best comedy of the year. Wow. It is the best comedy of the year. So if you're not watching it, you're missing out on our modern day Parks and Rec, uh, 30 Rock, The Office. It is a workplace comedy and I cannot believe that that's I'm good, saying huh? yes mm-hmm. that a network TV show, uh, something that's on ABC, is the funniest of yeah. the entire year. But it is. Uh, Quinta Brunson is an amazing creator. She's also such a great protagonist of this show. There's an awesome will they won't they relationship going on for my lover of love, shippers of ships, which you know that I am. And it's just like laugh out loud funny. Not one of those comedies that's like, am I, oh, I'm not really laughing. I'm like, hmm, that was smart. That You're was interesting. Laughing. You're it's laughing. You're like yeah. out loud gives you. Have break you checked it out? Head. I've seen a couple episodes, and I will say it's it's very well cast. Yes. I enjoy everyone in the show, which I feel like is very yeah. rare. Um, but totally. I, I really enjoyed it. So okay, so then that's all right, and that one's on ABC. And that you could do with your fam. Come on, Christian. We'll see. This has become my segment to convince Christian to do things. I know. We'll right. see if well, it works. Well, I got, listen, i got to finish Severance first. He, he right. doesn't have enough time. He has to go see Avatar again. That's right. <laughs> you see, Kat, Kathy, I feel like you've seen me. All right, here's the next one. The Sex Lives of College Girls. It's another one repeating. Yeah, I'm repeating this one because I finally just caught up on this season. I was behind on it because I thought season one was very good, but I didn't know how far I was going to make it into season two. And then I watched five episodes in one night, which is when you know you're really invested in something. Yep. This is not for the faint of heart. It, the title really tells you what's going on here. We are diving into the sex lives of college girls, and they do it in a way that I sometimes I'm like, should I be watching this? <laughs> Is this okay? But I think that they are making a big statement with this one. It's on HBO, so we see a lot, and it reminds me of being in college and what the sex lives of college girls are actually like. Yeah. So they... They really so basically have, don't send my kids to college. I think after watching this, you might homeschool them forever. Uh, I'm going to do Can that you thing. homeschool somebody in college? I yeah, don't think it works sure. like that. We'll make yeah, it work. You'll invent it. All right. Well, that's the, that, and the last one. Too Hot to Handle came back last night. What is this? <laughs> I don't feel like this is anything I would want. And I binged almost all of it. It is the best. The show is on Netflix. The premise of the show is that they bring a bunch of hot and horny people to an island, and then they tell them that they're there for a dating reality show, and then they tell them once they get there, actually, the only thing you can't do is have sex, and if you have sex, you lose money. 
and they all start having sex with each other. It is the most unbelievable premise. They like, if you make out with somebody, you lose $3,000. If you- I feel like they all know at this point though, what show they're signing up for. Did, okay, th I thought so too. But this season, they went to extremes. They brought Mario Lopez to mm -hmm. the place to yeah. pretend that he was hosting Fake like a host. completely different show. They brought a big jet and they called, uh, the show was like dating extreme. And they said that they were gonna have to do extreme sports. And they pitched to them like, this is an adrenaline show and adrenaline leads to sex drive and you'll be able to like have sex on a plane or whatever. <laughs> I really think when you look at the faces of these people, when they found out that they were on Too Hot to Handle, they were like crying. <laughs> they were in balls like no oh my God. it is it is trash at its finest um not the people the the actual show <laughs> like it is just the best if you if you love shows that just are like what how could i be spending time doing this this, this is, is can you do me a favor can you look at who created that show yeah. and tell me if it was elon gale okay <laughs> also what's the name of the the robot like it's like Siri Lana. That tells them, oh, Lana. Lana. Mm -hmm. She tells them if they've like broken a rule. Oh, it is amazing. And she comes on and they like all try to deny that it was them because they're like doing hanky panky in the sheets. Hanky and, like, panky. Yeah. Look at that. They're doing hanky panky. That's what Grammy calls it. Well, I was going to say, yeah. that's a very Myrtle like I, way to do it. I went on a date this week and Grammy called me. She's like, you do some hanky panky? I'm like, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not sure though. I'm gonna need a definition. Wait, is, is Elon Gale the one that did Bachelor? Yeah, okay. Elon Gale. So I worked with Elon Gale at, at at Bachelor, and he was there for a long time. Yeah. And then he went off on his own. He cre I know he no. he created uh, F Boy Island. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Another excellent show. I'm pretty sure he created. Thank that you one. for understanding. Yeah. That's exactly well, I, like. I this. just know how good how good Elon is at this stuff. So. No, it was uh, not him. Okay. All right. Well, either way, um, it's really, truly one of the great dating competition. Well, I was going to say, so watching, and and I don't know, and Rock, and Kathy, this is this, this is up to you if you if you decide you want to get in this conversation or not, because yeah. I understand. But but Roxy talks about it all the time, so I got to ask the dating life. Mm. You, the apps have been Bismal. a disaster. Yeah, but I went on a great first date. I went on my first hinge date this week. Okay. How did that go for you? Really well. Yeah. Unbelievably well. He okay. was like. Is this not the guy? This wasn't the guy. No, that guy. That guy's a, no, I texted you. Oh, you that texted guy me. Guy he blocked okay, me. <laughs> because I was going to ask for both, for both of you. Didn't too. And, well. and if you'd like, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But what is, what is, 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 is you even able to have a, a social life right now? I mean, I, I really don't have much time to do anything. So dating is something that I do want to prioritize, but I don't know that it's the top priority right now. Right. And so it, it has to be someone who's like, Two feet Worth in, yeah, yeah, and and I really enjoy spending time on my couch with my dog, eating dinner. So you get one day, it, yeah. Like it, it's got to be someone really special to right. to take my time away. Yeah, from it's that. gonna be tough. Yeah, both I know. of you guys too, because you both are workaholics. So, yeah, so. I mean, someone will ask me out and be like, "Oh, I gotta go see Avatar. I'm so sorry, I can't." <laughs> <laughs> see, that's what you got to do. It's Smart. Only my third time seeing it. So, that's, uh, see, I that's a priority. Yeah, Number Kathy one. just coming in here speaking truth. Truth. They've yeah. got to be better than Avatar. You know? Good yeah. luck. Good luck. Why don't? Two, three, why two, aren't two, you happy for me that I went on a good first date? I am happy. Mm -hmm. I want to hear about it. Well, that was kind of. It wasn't like all oh, unbelievable. Can, when I say what I'm about to say next, you're gonna understand. Okay. How often do I see you? A lot. How often do I see Kathy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so wait, my, my interpretation <laughs> of this is, Roxy, it isn't about you. <laughs> Only for right now. I know. <laughs> Only for right now. Usually, we we spent fifteen minutes on that so date excited. last night. I And so, all right, where's he from? No, no, you're he's right. He's not from anywhere. Yeah, he's he disappeared. He I don't know if I'll ever see him again. <laughs> so, so you just, no. it just, you were just happy that it went well. Yes. Every day to go on sucks. <laughs> Every day to go on is horrible. L.A. is a weird town for dating. I Do know. you want to hear my yes. L.A. dating analogy? Yeah. Of other towns, like say a Des Moines, Iowa, you have your mom and pop ice cream shop, you have chocolate and vanilla, maybe strawberry, you go in, you know what you want every single time. You're like, I'm getting that chocolate ice cream. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm getting it. You're happy with your choice, you're satisfied, you love it. Los Angeles is like Baskin Robbins, 6,000 flavors. Mm -hmm. You go in and you see the mint chocolate chip, the Rocky Road, the cinnamon toast crunch ice cream. Like you see all of these options and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna taste test. I'm gonna taste test until I'm sick. Oh, like, why? Just, and then you, you might, some people might get a scoop of two different things. Right. Some people, like it's just a, it takes you a lot longer to decide and it's that paradox of choice of when you have more options, you're less likely to come to a decision that you're happier with.
what date number do you start to think like, is this my person? Um, it depends. I, I typically like being friends with someone before I date them. And, and I think sometimes that's misinterpreted because there are people that I'm very much just friends with that yeah, uh, right. think they think they're in the friend zone. You're like, this isn't to you guys. <laughs> well, yeah, but, how, but how, but that's a great question. But, how do you get, how do you get somebody to not think, Oh, because um, after, cause you're always taught as a guy. Yeah. After a little bit, uh, we've been in, I've been in the friend zone here for like a month, two months. I, I don't know if this is I like work. directness. So if someone is going to ask me on a date, I appreciate if they ask me on a date and I can either say yes or I can say no. And mm -hmm. I hope that they respect that either way. Um, and sometimes they don't. And yes. that's always so fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's in L.A. It's definitely tough because it sometimes blurs the line between work and friends yeah, and yeah, whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that I do not appreciate, but, uh, but you like to be friends with the person before. I mean, I th I think that's the best way to start something. Mm -hmm. Of you have that mutual respect, um, and they realize that you're actually a person with feelings, and so they treat you a little bit better. Yeah. But yeah, dating dating on the apps is. I yeah, just I started. It's it, yeah. my first time, and I'm gonna say, mm -mm. stranger danger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not for you. Yeah, it feels sketch. Like it's just. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know how to navigate it at all yet and people do not have been doing you. it for years i do not envy you it was that was that was so god i was so uh, after my time the the apps I, but I it's like it. it feels like the only way to meet somebody anymore unless you meet them at work and i don't really feel like dating people from work anymore it's like a n nightmare for me to have to continue to run into my ex everywhere i f and go it's like yeah every time and people think it's like fun and i'm like this is actually hell for me yeah. like it's brutal oh speaking of uh, scenarios where we all go so Mar have you have you had an opportunity to see mark ellis live as far as comedy goes no you need to next never. time never next He's time never invited me that's not well that's why she's the bonnie jerk. <laughs> he's a real scumbag isn't i he? know the last time i said the i've same seen him at cryotherapy oh have I you and he isn't saying anything oh he's no. a big cryo guy i know yeah he's we there went to the same cryo place for a while and he didn't invite you never what what a bastard! Well, he has to perform on Wednesdays. Well, he did, but he just did. He just did his hour taping when everybody was there, and all the cool kids were at the first one. And Roxy, no, they weren't. Why not? Because I wasn't there. <laughs> Good point. I agree with you. Most of the cool kids. Had you been okay. there, you would have been at the first show. Okay, Fair actually, enough. before you before you say yes. that, let me just ask you: If you hear that a comedian is doing two shows. One of them is at 7:30. One of them is at 9:30. Oh, I'm going to the 7:30. Okay, right. but what's the cooler That's kid right. show? Seven thirty. Oh my god! Cool kids get in bed by nine p.m. <laughs> so I'm gonna right now. I'm Done. Gonna, but here's Done. but here's where I'm gonna win this argument. You watch, have children. Watch, watch What's your, your excuse? Watch your face. Watch your face. Mm -hmm. Early you know, morning workouts release yeah. endorphins, and then you have a better day. Yeah. Well, do you know who I was hanging out with afterwards? <laughs> yeah, I know who you were hanging who? out with afterwards. Eliza. Okay, so she was at the first one. Yeah, is she not I know. Cool? Is she not cool? Okay, she's the coolest. Right. So then she should. Have, so well, if you saying? where was my text message? About what? Going to the first show. Well, you decided, look, you left my birthday really early to go to Mark's show. I, I figured you were going to do it again. Oh, this is a point of contention with us. <laughs> I left when literally everybody else left. No, I was still sitting there eating my dessert. That's everybody fine, else had left. I left with Mark to Kathy, go to the show. Kathy, can I ask show. you a question? What? If I invited you to my birthday and I was eating dessert, would you leave in the middle of If you were going on, to a show? It depends I, it, on what time we're no, talking. It was, it was early and there was no mention of going to a show. I Texted you about it. Also, mm. let me ask you a question. Who's the first person at your birthday party? The first, very first. Because you felt bad because you knew you were going to bail. No. Oh. No, Just, I think that's respectful. If, if you know that you have to leave somewhere early, you show up. Yeah, but she didn't tell me. She was going to leave her early. Yes, I did. Well. No, you didn't. Kate did. Kate told you what? That she was going to leave early. This is um, crazy. I, I was there three hours. I have a question. Yes. Do you have people that did not show up to your birthday that you did not talk shit to after? Yes. Not mine. Yes. I did? Oh, yes. Dagnino. Yeah, Dagnino. Yeah, You're like, oh, Tom, no, you know, it's, all, it's okay. Because, you know, because he's built that. You know Tom. Yeah. You know Tom Dagnino. Tom Finstock. doesn't show up, and Christian's like, that's just Tom. I show up for three hours, first person there. Christian you were there for 15, 15 minutes. times has said to me, you, were there for 15, you left You were early. there for 15 minutes. I went left. to support our friend. You think it's Please. bad to support Mark? Is that what I'm hearing yeah. from you? Yeah, have seen it a million easier. times. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. <laughs> I Jesse wish Kelly doing the stand up bits now. That it's was good. true though. I it's really wish joke. if we were like the kind of people that were not um that were not reliable, oh, yeah, yeah. then everybody's easy on you. Like yeah. Tom has like created this reputation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I should I should hide under this bench. Yeah, it's because we're wearing red. You it's knew what was well, coming. Speaking of men, I'll tell you what, I know we'll get we'll get the uh before we let you both of you go, 
Guess what, guys? Manscaped. <laughs> Who's not a Manscaped fan? <laughs> Talk about Manscaped. Tis the season for clean ball bag. That's right. Follow la la la. It's our friends over at Manscaped, and they're helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season. From stocking stuffers to white elephants, Manscaped's products are at the top of every wish list. you got to grab some crop, crop mops for your pops, for, for the body buffer for the holiday lover. Win this year's white elephant gift and help all of the dudes in your life go from eggnog to nice hog this December and save 20% off and free shipping. you got to go to manscaped.com slash big thing manscaped is great we've been with them for a long long time and we love that they are back manscaped it's a one-stop shop for all your holiday needs they have the perfect gift in the platinum package 4.0 plus loads of all of little presents perfect for a stocking stuffer don't let their chestnuts roast in the wrong boxers get them a pair of manscaped boxers specially made to keep the area cool and provide holiday comfort all year round the Shears 2.0 is the full kit for nail care, scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file for the traveling man. There's the, the cologne that brings a light, breezy, woodsy feel and gives that fresh tree scent after Christmas is over. Manscaped is the best. They really are. We love them. You got to you go to the to top off the stocking for the, with the crown jewel for the family jewels for the lawnmower 4.0. This is the one that we have. I've talked about. I've had this. It is the best. It is the best. You have to get it. Manscaped is here to make holiday shopping a blast by giving products that they love and you're going to make them laugh. You save 20% off and free shipping. Go to manscaped.com slash big thing. 20% off and free shipping. Manscaped.com slash big thing. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. You got to get it. Anyway, you guys know what to do. People ask supporting the show. Any one of our sponsors, we hope that you will go into the link in the description. It's the holiday season. Get yourself one. You support the show and you support yourselves. I'm so happy that we had this show today, and I'm so happy that you joined us today. I'm very grateful that you guys invited me. Well, you know, honestly, unlike Mark Ellis, unlike Mark Ellis, <laughs> I'll tell you what's and I and I mean this though. Thank you because you just said that you only have so much time when you're here. So the fact that you carved some time out to be with us today was it meant, it meant a lot. So thank it you. It was really for Roxy. I figured oh, she wasn't happy until I told her. I said Roxy. She's like, I know. Thank God. I, think gonna, I thought I was going to be in the room with these two weirdos. The, the I didn't actually text her about my shirt, but I did send her a text this morning. I was like, Oh my God, am I seeing? <laughs> you today it's Christmas I was, morning. I was excited about that. I'm glad that it worked out. Um, and Rock, as always, thank you for the TV picks, and I'll see you next week for sure. Which one are you going to watch? Um, Severance. Gonna... So a pick from four months ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. It's good. I like the show. Where are you? <laughs> I just finished episode. I think I'm episode approaching one. six. <laughs> yeah, episode one. I was on one for a while. He texted me about watching the first 15 minutes. Maybe seven different times. Yeah. I tried the first 15 minutes. Yeah. Again, I tried the first 15 minutes. There are yeah. a few shows that it, it takes me a while to get into. And yeah, see? Yeah. And no. the 7.30 is on, the coolest show. I think that's not the coolest show, and I'm not on either of your teams in that, okay. but I'm on your team in life. Well, mm. I, I think you're wrong, so is Kathy. So. B minus. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your dating apps. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you once again for joining us. It is the big thing. Thank you to Brett Sheridan for sitting on the couch. Thank you for Kathy Kelly for joining us. Thank you to Roxy. And thank you to all you guys. Make sure you comment. Make sure if you haven't already, head on over to the podcast feed and get yourself a subscription to the podcast. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, follow us anywhere that podcasts are found. Patreon. There's a lot of great stuff we're doing over there. So please join us over there. Get yourself a shirt. Do the whole thing. It's the big thing. We out. Peace.